And uh, we will be presenting two cases. We one of the cases we intervened recently, and another is the case uh, we're planning to planning for some intervention. Uh, so the uh, first case is 55 years female. Uh, she presented a uh, history of um, uh, bilateral calf pain at the time of walking, more in right calf. So after walking for about 200 meters in a uh, in a plain area, she uh, has pain, especially on the right calf. And sometimes also in the left calf after walking for a longer distance. And the pain is very typical of uh, cloud diffusion. It, um, there is a relief of pain after taking rest. And uh, side by side, she also had a history of headache and recently headache and palpitation. Uh, and there's no history of sort of a bed, just pain, loss of consciousness, weakness of limbs. And uh, she is a non smoker. So uh, when we examined, uh, we we could not uh, palpate uh, pulse in uh, left uh, brachial and radial artery. Uh, and however, pulse in the right upper limb was um, palpable. Yeah. So there was only femoral artery uh, palpable in right lower limb, uh, and the distal pulse of right lower limb was not palpable. In the left uh, lower limb, uh, all the pulses were uh, palpable. And both the legs were warm. And there was no ulceration or ischemic changes uh, in the limb. So uh, then we did ABI in OPT and the ABI of right leg was uh, 0 0.5 and the left leg was uh, 1.08. So when we did ultrasound in OPD, we could find a uh, monophasic flow in right uh, posterior tibial artery, anterior artery and popliteal artery. And uh, there was triphasic flow in right femoral artery and uh, triphasic flow in left uh, common femoral, uh, popliteal artery and distal arteries. There were atherosclerotic changes throughout the patients. And in the left uh, bracket and radial artery, the flow was monophasic. So, this uh, CT angiogram pictures we had already shared uh, a week back. So, we could see um, stenosis in the bilateral common iliac artery. And also, um, surprisingly, there was stenosis in the left uh, renal artery. And there were features of uh, atherosclerotic changes. So, so the both common ILAC artery, the stenosis was like a near total occlusion, uh, just nearby uh, bifurcation, and there was uh, distal reformation was seen. So uh, within a couple of days, we planned this group for, uh, for ballooning, and uh, in catheterization laboratory, laboratory, before angioplasty, the picture was pretty similar to that seen in the CT angiogram. And uh, the largest balloon we had was uh, five millimeter by twenty millimeter balloon. So we used uh, both the balloons, uh, same like the one we did a month back, and uh, like a uh, kissing balloon technique. And after angioplasty, uh, we could see slightly better results, especially on the left side. However, on the right side, the result doesn't seem to be very much better. Um, however, in follow up, the patient has uh, some uh, relief of symptoms uh, in follow up of a week, in one week's follow up time. So uh, we'd like to discuss about this case. Uh, uh, as discussed before also, I think this case is also a good candidate for placement of stent, especially for um, for the right side. So we'd like to hear from all of us. So, so it was already after a week that the symptoms um, uh, came back, yeah? No, no, like uh, now, according to patient and patient party, um, they have noticed like a relief of symptoms, like the cloudic resistance has increased right now, but. Uh... I mean, basically, we, we sort of talked about that um, in the WhatsApp chat. And um, of course, it's it's a, it's a classical indication for us for um, yeah. kissing. Um, because what you did was uh, technically OK. You did a kissing balloon technique, which is important because if you only inflate one balloon, you might um, you might compress the other side, the opposite side. So you always have to do it in a, in, in a double balloon technique or kissing balloon technique. But of course, in this case, you have to to insert stents there too because um, it will uh, it it will narrow again. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, the left side obviously had been 
much better before and too, right? Because the ABI and everything was okay as far as I remember. Yeah. So the right side was the, the leading in, in terms of clinic. Yeah, I mean, there's not much, much more to add or what would you say, Dean? Yeah, you have to... The, yeah. um, uh, the iliac on the right, you know, we don't see it well in your after angioplasty. So, but it's okay, right? I mean, a delayed picture shows it to still be open. Yeah, yeah. So we could notice a slightly, uh, like, um, like a less uh, stenosis, even on the right side. But uh, in this picture, not as clear as. Yeah. No, I agree with Florian. You'd have to. Uh... Stent will be the ultimate thing, you know, and you can always do a, in the future. Now she, she's able to walk 200 meters or probably more now. Yeah. It really, you don't have to do anything. Now she is young, 55. Otherwise, if you don't, if you have a limited number of stents, you could stent the left and do a fem fem if her right side would get bad. So Dr. Dean, one, one query we had was like, if we had only one stent, so will the stenting of right uh, eye, common eye leg is better or stenting left and doing fem fem? Which, one, which option would have been better? Well, your chance of success is best if you stent the left. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Florian? Or, see, well, her claudication symptoms must have only been in the right foot because your ABI and pulses are normal on the left. Yeah. So you really, you, you could have just stented the right side. You're exactly right. Could have stented the right side and you wouldn't have to do any fem fem. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah that's right. But there's always a danger of compromising the left side than if you only stent one side. And then, right. I mean, do it under a balloon um, um, protection on the left side. That's right. But I mean, this, the left side is also... Uh, yeah, it's it's narrowed also but yeah i mean yeah good good question actually could if you do it under balloon protection on the left side you could place a stand on the right side without a compromising left side yeah that would be an option otherwise um i think for sure it's much easier to to put the stand into the left side and then do a fem fem but yeah good question both options are possible hmm I think you can make arguments both ways. Yeah, yeah. The best, the best is to have two stents. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So maybe, I don't know if, uh, um, Steen, if you if you ask Mike, and I mean, he saw the pictures. Um, so maybe if he comes to do like one, one day or the other, then um, yeah. can do it with Mike maybe. Because, I mean, there's no need for, as Dean said, there's no need for, for urgent treatment. I mean, there's no need for treatment at all right now. Yeah. So, but maybe in half a year or so, six months, or maybe even next next year. If the right leg would go bad tomorrow and you have a good left femoral pulse, I'd do a fem-fem. In other words, your, your angioplasty failed, you know. Yeah. But but only if it's if it's really if it's almost critical because right I mean the left side is not perfect either and then it has to deliver blood to both sides if you do a fem fem so for that you would be want to be sure that the inflow is perfect so so in next follow up uh, we'll be repeating ABI and ultrasonography so we'll update yeah. this too. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, but but I think most important, of course, is the clinical situation. So, I mean, as long as it's not critical, there's there's time. But it's it's okay to to do a follow up because then you can actually sort of measure how it's uh, or really survey if there's a decrease in ABI, for example, or if it's if it's stable or something like that. So it's interesting. It's it if you have a nice follow up, you can you can see this as an as an interesting uh, case actually. So, right, the ABI gives you a quantitative number that you compare, can compare month to month. Ultrasound, 
you know, I don't know how you compare ultrasound to ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Anyway, good. So uh, we'll proceed with the next case. So uh, Sanjay will be present. So Sanjay, are you ready? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in OPD, uh, 65 years, uh, female presented in uh, 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 serious OPD with a complaint of uh, uh, left leg pain six, uh, since six months, uh, unable to walk, blackish discoloration of uh, toes of the left foot since uh, uh, one month uh, with uh, mild shortness of breath and on and off cough with the, uh, no history of chest pain, palpitation, lo uh, loss of consciousness and dizziness. Uh, says chronic smoker uh, with a uh, long standing history of uh, hypertension and uh, lipidemia under medication. Yeah, on clinical examination, uh, peripheral pulses are regular and euvolumic in upper limbs, a gangrenous dry, uh, gangrenous to uh, off left foot. It seems to be a dry gangrene and, uh, uh, and pul palpation of the pulses in the left leg, uh, uh, posterior tibial, anterior tibial, and popliteal artery of left leg are not palpable. Left femoral pulses is present and uh, normal peripheral pulses in the right leg. Cardiovascular examination, normal uh, S1 and S2 heart sound with no murmur. Uh, in the assessment in, in investigations, so we assess the case and we order ABI. In ABI, the right leg is 1.3, but in left leg, um, uh, it's only 0 0.41. And the atrial duplex, so the no flow uh, in the uh, left popular artery with uh, a varying ecogenic content inside the lumen of popliteal artery with a monophasic uh, low resistance flow in the left ATA, PTA with uh, max velocity, uh, peak systolic velocity only around uh, 15 centimeters per second with uh, limit, uh, left femoral uh, triphasic flow with PSV uh, more than 50 uh, centimeter per second. And again, uh, it uh, changes in the whole segment of the artery and from uh, femoral to the uh, uh, a PTA ATA and uh, in a uh, right leg, a uh, triphasic normal flow in the uh, uh, artery. And ECG is unremarkable, and echocardiography is also normal. Uh, on, on the basis of all these, the, our conclusion is 65 years female with multiple cardiovascular risk factors, uh, now newly diagnosed uh, with severe peripheral artery occlusion, uh, occlusive disease due to the complete popliteal artery occlusion of the left lower limb, which is symptomatic and impairing quality of life. So she needs intervention. And for that, uh, uh, we order the CT angio uh, in order to uh, determine the, whether uh, the C is uh, uh, a surgery candidate or intervascular candidate. So in CT, there is complete occlusion of left popliteal artery with uh, distal ATA and PTA opacification with multiple collateral present. And we can see the popliteal artery. There is no any uh, uh, contrast filling in the popliteal artery with some uh, multiple cork screw uh, collaterals. And the now that we have uh, our city peripheral angiography findings and the our uh, uh, discussion points would be uh, well, uh, what can be done for patients betterment bypass or the angioplasty and stent placement. So, can I say something? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's critical. I mean, he has a gangrene, so you don't have much time to think about. And it's in the popliteal segment, so I wouldn't put a stent there because the risk of it occluding is very high. So I think you need to do bypass surgery, but it looks like the femoral artery is good. So maybe you can do a P1 and go to a cruel artery or to, to the trunkers sure, bypass. and do bypass surgery because... I don't think a stent would work in a moving segment, you know, just my opinion. Thank you. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Smart woman. So I would try the same 
to save as much as you can and you got to do it like tomorrow you got to do it soon and you're gonna you your hope i think your hope is that you'll be able to save a, a four foot amp now i'm not quite sure how from the picture i couldn't tell how far the gangrene uh came proximal on the foot but you know that's critical and you got to do it like soon now if you have no well anyway bottom line yeah no, the, the, there's, there's just one problem. The problem is that um, from a technical point, um, the distal anastomosis part will be not easy because this is the, well, it's almost, as Francisca said, the, it's the trunk is going into the um, fibula and posterior, uh, posterior um, artery. So technically this is kind of demanding, but still this is the only option you have. Um, and, and also the advantage of this procedure is that you can really do a P1, P3 or P, a P1 cruel and you only need a short segment of vein. Otherwise, which is technically easier, would be an anterior bypass, but then you have to come from the groin because uh, you can't do a P1. Well, you can, you actually can. You can P1, open the P3 compartment, go to the inter, uh, inter osseal membrane, and then um, do an anastomosis on the anterior artery, but uh, yeah. Isn't, don't, that, don't isn't, that, that, isn't that the posterior tibial? What's that? Can't you go P1 to posterior tibial and you get retrograde? Yeah, 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 you could, you could, yeah, yeah, you could as well. Yeah, that's right. The posterior tibial's easier to get at beyond, yeah, 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 beyond yeah, the yeah. trunk, and you'll get retrograde flow into the perineal and a little bit in the anterior tibial. Yeah. So yeah, but it's e the easiest would be that's right, Dean. Yeah, but I just see I'm, I'm, I was like kind of kind of blind because this is definitely easy, but it's it's kind of difficult again to expose the uh, tibial posterior in the proximal part. So um, maybe you'd go for the lower part of it because there it's relatively much uh, relatively close to the surface, so it's not not it's not very deep. It's very superficial there. So, right. So if you have good vein, an excellent vein, you can go down further. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, if it is okay, then uh, I have concern that the all the artery uh, distal to that uh, occlusion might be uh, atherosclerosis. So uh, if artery condition of the, that uh, the artery is not good because of the atherosclerotic plaque, then... Uh, what would be the result? Well, f first of all, first of all, Sanjay, um, you said on the on the opposite leg there are good pulses down there, and according to this CT, even though I think we have to be a bit careful about the um, about that and about the interpretation of the I mean the quality of the CT, I don't know, but the otherwise the the, the vessels seem to be pretty good. So maybe actually this is just a local problem. Maybe she had a kind of I don't know what, um, mm -hmm. in a former time, kind of, of lesion there in Ambulus or something like that. And this is how Thomas. there's this, only this local uh, problem. It could could be, you know, and the other arteries are fairly okay. Otherwise, yeah, you might be right. It might be arteriosclerotic down there, but I mean, still, what would you do? Um, um, yeah. We treat yeah. patients who generally have an arteriosclerosis. So, and it seems to be patent according to the CT scan. Yeah. So Sanjay, I think, I think what you're trying to say is there looks to be a lot of disease in the foot. So we don't know perfectly whether CTA is number one. Number two, it's like Florian said, you have no other option. So I mean, either you do it or you're ending up with a probably a below the knee amp as opposed to maybe a four foot amp. So you try it and hope for the best. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so, any comments uh, by Satis? So, Satis, can you answer? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can proceed with uh, presentation by Dr. Florian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Robin, can you give me the? What so is it? I need. I'll stop my share. The permission, or what is it? You have to make me the host, or what is it?
Your friend, can you try to share your screen? Um, well, how do I do that? Oh, right, I have to. So all participants can share now. I, I need. So it says it deactivated the. Uh, what's that? What's that mean? For now, I think you can share this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can I? Oh, right. Yeah, see it? Yeah, is that okay? Everyone sees it? Yeah, good. So I, I just had the thought when reading this publication about the, the two cases um, we did uh, in uh, in Dulico that um, I... I got the feeling that we maybe have to talk about the stylus X induced ischemia syndrome because I've got the feeling.